Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Stafford Maxon His Bender. All right, so on the bench today is the Stafford Maxon His Bender 1944T. Uh, so you're probably having the same reaction I did when I first saw this, which is I have no idea what that is. And that is because this pedal is fairly rare on this side of the Pacific Ocean. This was a uh, pedal that was only released in Japan uh, it, during the years, I think, 2011 and 2012. It was a line from Maxon that apparently was meant to replicate famous guitar player sounds from Japan. Uh, obviously didn't last very long, it was only two years, and as far as I can see, they are not available anymore. The general consensus online is that it's some kind of tone bender. We're going to open it up and see what's going on in there and do a trace of the pedal. And then we'll have a look at the circuit and see what it actually is. As far as externals here, we have pretty standard 1590B-esque size enclosure, maybe a little bit smaller. Stafford Maxon is written on. Uh, Maxon, obviously, very famous pedal manufacturer from back all the way to the 60s. Uh, although I think they started with guitar pickups. I don't know when they actually started making pedals, and probably it was more like 70s or 80s. Uh, but they obviously famous are they're obviously famous for making pedals for Ibanez. Uh, Stafford, no idea what that is referencing the his bender the name obviously suggests tone bender but you know we'll see 1944t no idea input and output jacks are side mounted gain and volume controls little five mil or excuse me three millimeter red led latching's foot switch but it's very soft uh, probably my guess is being a max and pedal is probably going to use jfet switching not true bypass uh, we have a pretty standard made in japan sort of boss ibanez style or Maxon style uh, DC input sticker here with the DC input uh, center negative. Outside is a sort of a textured black uh, paint. I'm not, I don't know if it's powder coat or some sort of other material. The knobs are the what I would call MXR style knobs. Uh, and interesting, the set screw is a hex key. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the externals. Let's go ahead and crack open the pedal. All right, so here is the PCB assembly for the Stafford Maxon His Bender. Uh, so we have a two board setup here, pretty standard for Maxon. Smaller board has the potentiometers, LED, a couple components, and they're connected just with wires to the main board here. As far as off board components, the foot switch is a pretty standard single pole double throw. Nice and light, but that pretty much confirms we do have JFET switching. Uh, the quarter inch jacks are enclosed plastic type. The main board here, you can see, is marked with Maxon. Uh, I can already see there's a bunch of components missing off the board here, which implies to me that either this pedal went through multiple revisions, which, considering the short lifespan, I think that's unlikely. More likely, this board is probably used for something else. One thing I can tell right off the bat, it's probably not a tone bender, uh, because we do have an op amp here, a 1458 uh, dual op amp. And last time I checked, no tone benders have op amps. Uh, I do see a couple TO92 packages, which are most likely JFETs for the switching. Considering it's a Maxon paddle, we probably also have some buffers in there. Board mounted DC jack, a couple filter caps here, electrolyte caps that are probably for filtering. And we also have a pair of what looks to be germanium diodes sitting in there. These two here. There were tone benders that had a germanium diode. Uh, but uh, these two are back-to-back -back and presumably symmetrical, so more likely that those are clipping diodes somewhere. Nice build quality, eighth inch, or excuse me, eighth watt carbon film resistors, which are fine. No guitar pedals 
at least not a drive pedal like this will ever need anywhere close to even eighth of a watt of power dissipation for a resistor. Single sided PCB, so all your traces are just on the bottom side here. Top side is just the silk screen. Soldering is very even. Uh, it's the quality you expect to see from uh, a Japanese made pedal like Maxon or Boss. All right, so next step is I'm gonna trace out this pedal and we will see what it has going on inside. Um, of course, through the magic of editing, this is gonna happen instantaneously for you. For me, it's probably gonna be an hour or so. So let's see what happens. All right, let's see if I can do this cool editing trick. Ready? Did I do it? Did it look real? Anyway, uh, so I've traced out the pedal uh, and to the surprise of probably no one at this point, it is not a tone better, not even close. Uh, it is basically a distortion plus with input and output buffers. A little bit disappointing. Uh, not a whole lot of innovation going on here. Uh, however, buffers uh, are a useful tool that uh, make a lot of sense for a lot of people's guitar setups. And Distortion Plus from MXR, while it's a love pedal, did not have a buffer. So, you know, take it or leave it. I can I can see a spot where, you know, I wanted Distortion Plus, but I also, also want buffer signal and bypass. So maybe this does, maybe this pedal does have a place. Uh, it's yeah, I think it's maybe a slightly misleading to call it the His Bender when it doesn't even have anything really to do with a Tone Bender, but um, that's an argument for somebody else. So let's go ahead and look at the circuit. Uh, it is, like I said, it's a Distortion Plus with input and output buffers. Uh, I did not show on this schematic the JFET switching. It is a standard Maxon Ibanez JFET switching. Uh, so it's going to tap off here from the first buffer, and that's going to go over to one JFET switch, and then the second JFET switch is going to be connected here to the circuit. So depending on the state of the foot switch, it's either going to uh, open up this side of the JFET switch and just connect buffer to buffer, and then that's out. That's your bypass setting. If the switch is in the other position, then this JFET that's connected to this line is closed and this uh, JFET opens up and then the uh, signal passes through the distortion circuit. Uh, as far as these distortion plus parts of the pedal, uh, it's pretty much bog standard. You've got your op amp here. In this case, it's a 1458, not a 741. Uh, also, the uh, just the one side of the 1458 is used. The second side is unused. Uh, which isn't ideal. You could have used that side of the op amp to do a, a unity gain buffer for the half supply voltage, uh, but they didn't do that. Now, to be fair, that could have been because they're using a board that's for something else uh, and it just wasn't set up to do that. So you, you can get a pass, but ideally, if you have a second half of an op amp and it's on your board, you might as well do something with it. Um, non inverting op amp, you got the gain control coming off the tail on the feedback loop. That's where the gain control is. Uh, you got your hard clipping geranium diodes with a little high filtering or, or low pass cap here to uh, to ground one nanofarad coming out to your volume control. So this right here, this is your distortion plus. And then you've also got the input buffer, of course, and the output buffer and then the JFET switching, hooking it all together. So this schematic, I'm gonna make a thread on uh, freestompboxes.org. If you wanna check out and download the schematic, it will be available there, as well as some extra pic pictures from the tracing process. Uh, for right now, uh, let's just add one more thing. Let's go ahead and test the forward voltage on the germanium diodes. All right, so there's the top diode, 0.325 or so. So almost definitely germanium. Second diode here, lower diode is 0.319 so pretty close almost definitely germanium and just from the looks of it they're they're definitely germanium uh, but they are probably not soviet made because the the band does indicate the cathode and if you recall from other pedals like the uh the jhs overdrive preamp the soviet diodes the band in fact indicates the anode but these are indicating cathode so these are probably of western manufacture all right, that's it for the Stafford Baxton His Bender. Let's go ahead and put the pedal back together.
All right, that is a wrap on the Stafford Maxson his bender. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you want to see on a future teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I make a new video. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.